Hi guys, I hope you're all doing really well. Today I thought I would do a bit of a haul slash unboxing slash just a bit of a random video of everything that I kind of wanted to show you guys that I've got recently. Now as I was saying um, a couple of weeks ago, was it, no it was last week, um, I was doing this Beanstalk volunteering thing and that means working with children and their reading. And I wanted to expand my children's book collection for a long time because I've always collected children's books. I love reading them myself and I just think so, so many of them are just so beautiful. So I've spent a while um, looking through the works website because they do 10 children's books for £10 on there. And I also went to a boot fair this weekend and picked up some absolute treasures as well. So this is my current children's book stash. Oh gosh, um, and it lives up here normally. Um, but I just wanted to show you guys some of the highlights of this because especially if you've got young children or you know you want to buy a present for a niece or a nephew or I don't know a, a brother or sister then there's some really good ideas in here or books that I've never really seen before but that I really love at the moment so the first book that I got so let me find it let me find it let me find it is this one and it's called Animal Pants and this is by Brian Moses and Anja Boretsky I think it is um, and this book is just brilliant. I mean, children love books that are a little bit rude um, and a little bit, you know, close to the mark. And pants, you know, the word pants to children is really, really funny. And this book is just so brilliant because the, it's got rhyming in it as well. So children are going to love the rhyming. But it's just really cute and the illustrations are really lovely. And it's all about different animals in their pants. And then the book's kind of like, why are animals wearing all the all pants? And then it turns out they're going to a pant contest. And then the child that's reading the book then gets to decide who they think has got the best pair of pants on so it's a really cute really fun engaging read and it's really really short as well it's only kind of like 12 pages long maybe 20 not very long at all so that's a really really lovely book and then these two other books I've got these are absolutely fantastic and they are not exactly the simplest books to read but they have got so much going on in the stories and in the pictures that even if you were to read it to the child they would still get a lot from it and they are Jack and the Incredibly Mean Stalk and Snow White and the Seven Dark Frogs and these are both by Gemma Carey and Kelly Casewell um, or Caswell I think I'm not sure who did the whether they both wrote it whether one did the drawing or the illustrations and one did the writing but oh yeah here we go written by Gemma illustrated by Kelly yeah um, but these are like retellings of famous fairy tales, so for example Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, this one is Snow White and the Seven Dart Frogs and it follows the same kind of idea as a fairy tale and you know there's an evil queen and she breaks the mirrors and everything but then it turns out that you know Snow White's got these evil frogs and it's just so brilliant and such a clever retelling of what we all know as a fairy tale. Um, and the writing is really nice and big as well. I mean, there is quite a lot of writing in it, but it's just a really funny story. And even I was laughing when I was reading it. So, you know, it's suitable for kind of any child and for their parent to read as well. And I just think it's really cute. And again, the illustrations are beautiful. And the same goes for Jack and the Really Mean Stalk. This one was my favourite out of the two. It's about um, Jack and instead of growing a beanstalk, he grows a mean stalk. And this stalk is really horrible to everybody. And it says that he's smelly and... It's just a really cute little story and again really lovely illustrations and really engaging colours and pictures and the story is really really simple as well for a child to understand so I would definitely recommend those two if you're looking for children's books. And then the final book that I've picked up if I can find it is this one called One Bear Lost by Karen Hales and I think it was illustrated by Jenny Jones yeah. This is such a brilliant book and it's so simple but also it's got lovely rhymes to it and it's just so lovely and the pictures are lovely and it's just so lovely <laughs> um this is um basically a book about a group of 10 bears and as the book goes on one bear kind of gets lost along the way so it starts off with um oh i can't find the page now where it starts so for example 10 sleepy bears wake from a winter's night one wanders out into the early morning night early morning night early morning light Nine scruffy bears wash in a sparkling stream, one dries off, his fur all fresh and clean, and it goes through until they get down to one bear who's all alone and he's lost, but it doesn't matter because he goes back and he finds his family and they're all happy in the end, but it's just such a cute and simple story, and I think that rhyming books are so important for children because it gets them engaged and it's got a nice rhythm to it, and I just think it's a really, really fun book to read, so I definitely, definitely recommend this. 
And I also wanted to quickly show you two word games that I've got. And these are word games I've had for years and years and years, but I only just really thought about that they'd be really good to take into the schools with me. The first one is called My Word, and this is made by Waddington's. And I bought this ages ago from a charity shop. And it is basically a card game where, if you know, if you've played dominoes before, it's a little bit like that kind of but you get um cards with letters on them and you have to ma match them up so for example um i bet none of them are going to work now i'm gonna have to search through the whole deck but if you were playing um somebody might lay that card down for example and then i might put that one to make the word hang and i'd get a point and it's kind of like making four letter words by joining lots of cards together and it's a good idea to get children engaged in a fun way to learn words and learn how to spell words and making words because when children play games i don't think they really realize that they're actually learning in their you know learning their words they're just having a fun game so it's definitely a good really good game and it's really easy to play you can have as many players as you want um you, you can even play in, like with two people so that's a really great game and i'd really recommend that one and also i got these for my birthday last year and these are called rory story cubes now i just love these because i thought they were a really cute little thing to keep on my bookcase just as a kind of like a decorative thing but they also are really good in terms of their use um and they come in a little box like this which is really cute and oh there's the instructions and there are nine cubes inside and each cube has got six different pictures on each of the six different faces oh they're all gonna fall over with everywhere now so for example this one has got an alien and then it's got an arrow and a mobile phone some lightning um a walking stick and some scales and the idea is that you can either you can play this as a game or you can just use it as kind of inspiration to write your own novel or anything but the game way you can roll them all throw them onto the table and then you have to make a story using every single picture you can see or you can do it by rolling say for example three and then you have to use those three things to tell a story and it's kind of just getting children's imaginations going and giving them the chance to make up their own stories and be a bit inventive and have a go at kind of creating a really fun and exciting story and I've lost one. Oh, there it is um so yeah that is a really good idea um and they're they're not the cheapest i think they they were about 10 pounds maybe a little bit more than that for a box so not exactly the cheapest but i definitely think you'd get a lot of use out of them and they do lots of different um versions as well this is just the uh, basic like the simple one you can get ones that are action ones or you can get ones that are like voyages so like planes and holiday theme and things like that but yeah really love this game and definitely definitely a good idea for children so now i'm going to move on to showing you some actual books that I've got. oh no we've fallen over um so now i'm going to move on and show you some books that i've got this week um and i've also got a package to open but uh, i've only got two books to show you the first one is called blue by lisa glass and this came to me from quirkus so thank you so much to whoever sent this to me at quirkus this is um a coming of age story set in the world of sun surf and glittering beaches surfing is 16 year old iris's world and when the ultra talented zeke walks into her life it's about to become her passion and i can't wait to read it because i love ya fiction i love teenage fiction and i love the idea of a little bit of a summer love story because who doesn't love a bit of summer loving so thank you to quirk for sending this i cannot wait to read it and the second book i've got sent this week is called the boy in the book and this was sent to me from headline and it is by nathan penlington now this just sounds incredible um this is about um the author himself loved choose your own adventure books when he was younger and i'm sure you all know the choose your own adventure books where you'd kind of choose where to go and you'd like go to this page and this page etc so when he came across a set of the first 106 volumes for sale on ebay he snapped them up he was looking forward to a nostalgic trip back to his childhood but what he discovered instead would send him on an adventure all of his own as he turned the pages of the first book the cave of time another story started to emerge Scrawled in the margins were the thoughts of the little boy who had originally owned them, a boy called Terence Pendergast. There were, no no there were notes for future readers and sarcastic asides, but also something darker. Hidden inside the book were four pages of a diary. Terence confided about being bullied at school, the things he hated about himself, or a desperate need for friends. Even though it must have been nearly 20 years since Terence wrote these words, it was clear that they were a cry for help. Nathan was compelled to answer that call, to find Terence, or at least find out what happened to him. Nathan's search for Terence is at once funny, moving, and more than a little quick quiz, oh, I can't say this word, quixotic. Quixotic? Quixotic, I think that's how you say it. There would be dead ends and crossed wires, and along the way Nathan would have to face his own childhood demons. It is a story about the dark places that can exist in any childhood, but also with the sanctuary to be found in books, and at the en end of his adventure Nathan would find one more surprise. So, 
I'm sorry that I can't read today, but that is the blurb, and I just think that sounds so incredible that like books have just connected people and how one person from years ago has left these little notes in the margin of a book and somebody's going on, going on this mission to try and find him. So I just think it's amazing and I cannot wait to read this one. I really want to read it soon. And then finally, this package just arrived in the post and this is from Pam McMillan because they are awesome. Um, and I wanted to do a bit of an unboxing. I can't quite remember what's in here. So this is as much of a surprise for you as it is for me. Is that, what, yeah. Um, I'm going to use a pen because I don't have a pair of scissors on me, so this could get messy. Um, but I think these are all young adult titles, of, like um, children's fiction. So thank you so much to the lovely Jessica at Pan who sends me these books because she is a star. So this is going to be hard to open because I'm not very strong. That didn't work very well. Come on. Okay, there we go. It is open. They're all falling everywhere. Oh, yay, this is exciting. Okay, there's just the delivery note. So the first book that I have got is called The Ultimate Truth by Kevin Brooks. Now, Kevin Brooks is one of my most favouritest authors in the entire world. And I think this is the same Kevin Brooks that um, has written some other books that I love. Um, yes. Yes, he is. Um, this is called The Ultimate Truth, and I just love Kevin Brooks, so I wanted to read this book straight away. Um, this was about Travis, whose parents have been killed in a car crash. It looks like an accident, but Travis has his doubts. To distract himself from his grief, he goes to the private investigation agency that ran, they, they ran, sorry, and begins asking questions about their, la their last case. Immediately he's plunged into a mystery that seems impossible to unpick. Why were Travis's mum and dad hired to find a boy whose parents insist isn't missing? Where is the kid now? Has he run away or is he mixed up in something sinister? And why are the CIA, MI5 and a shadowy organisation known as Omega interested in the case of a missing teenager? As Travis searches for answers, the chilling realisation dawns that maybe he was right all along. Maybe the car crash that killed his parents wasn't an accident after all. That was a bit of a mouthful, but I love the cover and I'm really, really excited to read this book because, like I say, I just adore Kevin Brooks. So thank you so much, Jessica, for sending me this book. You are the best. The next book I can see is also ridiculously exciting and it is called Cuckoo Song by Francis Harding or Hardinge? <laughs> Harding or Hardinge? I'm not quite sure how to say it. That was a really weird way I just said that. Um, yeah, this is called Cuckoo Song. Um, when Tris wakes up after an accident, she knows that something is very wrong. She is insatiably hungry. She keeps waking up with leaves in her hair, and her sister seems terrified of her. When it all gets too much and she starts to cry, her tears are like cobwebs. Soon Tris discovers that what happened to her is more strange and terrible than she could ever have imagined, and that she is quite literally not herself. In a quest to find the truth, she must travel into the terrifying underbelly of the city to meet a twisted architect who has dark designs on her family before it's too late. So I love the sound of that, and I mean this cover is haunting, but absolutely beautiful at the same time. I just think that's so pretty, and again, the spines are so beautiful. Um, so again, thank you so much Jessica for sending this book my way. You are the best person in the world, I have to say. And now I'm just about to cry with pure, just amazingness, because I have got the, I don't know what this series is called, is it called the... Tempest series? Tempest trilogy. I might just go and cry in the corner at the moment. Look at those. Tempest, Vortex and Time Storm by Julie Cross. And I cannot tell you how damn excited I am for these. I'm not going to read the blurbs of these two books because these are the second and the third book in the series and I don't want to ruin it for myself so I'm not going to read the blurb of these. But I will tell you what this one is about. I think I might have hauled this before actually in a library book haul. Um, this is about Jackson, um, who has a secret, he can jump into his own past, but when a shocking event propels him further back in time than he has ever been before, he finds he can't return. Now Jackson has to find a way to save the girl he loves before they have even met, and time is not on his side. So I just think that sounds amazing, and I mean, this book, the cover is just stunning, absolutely stunning, and so are the ones for these two as well. That's the second book called Vortex, and that is the third one called Time Storm. I just think they're absolutely beautiful, stunning books. So thank you so much, Jessica, because you have sent me so many amazing books recently that you just deserve the biggest hug ever. And I'm going to hug you over the internet now. So thank you, Jessica. That was so very kind of you. And it means the hell of a lot to me that you have sent them all to me. So thank you. Now I'm getting all thank you and um, 
I just need to be quiet. Okay, I think that's everything I wanted to show you. I'm just sticking around. I can't think of any other books that I've got that I haven't shown you yet. So yes, I think that is everything that I wanted to show you guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it has been slightly interesting and not um, too boring for you. And I will be back soon with another video I might do a weekly wrap up this week or I might not because I have just shown you quite a lot of the books I've got this week but if I get any more then I would do a really short weekly wrap up um so thank you for watching this video guys um if you've got any comments about any of the books then leave them below and I will get back to answering you soon so thank you for watching this video I don't even know what I'm saying anymore this is just turning into a mess isn't it thank you for watching this video and I'll see you again very soon bye guys